Good evening, traders. Welcome to the live webinar with Admiral Markets. We're going to take a look at solutions, basically, versus your lack of confidence, perhaps, or you know, any remedies that we can offer. We are going to do so uh, in this live webinar, uh, this pro learning educational webinar. My name is Chris, and Nanet, of course, is with us as well. We're going to both dive into this topic. First of all, though, be aware of these two disclaimers. First, explaining the fact that this webinar is shown to a global audience, also the recording later on and may not be suitable for everyone, please take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity for more details about that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for educational and informational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, plus you are aware of the risk involved when trading. So Nenet and I, uh, of course, uh, do webinars regularly, so you can check that out on the Admiral Markets website. And also you'll find there, for instance, our blog, where we write our opinion twice a week. So we try to uh, always spice it up with some new kind of angles. And of course, we have analysis as well, technical and wave analysis uh, and uh, fundamental analysis. So if you like, please check us out there, AdmiralMarkets.com. Today's focus, okay, I got five points for you, and uh, basically, they're in a way, of course, all a bit interconnected, right? There's not like, they're not all independently from each other. They're all kind of influencing each other a bit. So some things uh, might be, be, you know, come back in, in other moments. Well, the first thing that I want to start with is basically charging changing our way that we look at the market the way we basically approach trading and approach uh, the market price movements and, and how what we think about it and how we act towards it so many times traders basically look at the market and they have expectations what is going to happen or what should happen we opinionize we have an opinion uh, that is quite strong that doesn't doesn't have to be right away but as we analyze we got to get attached to what we think should happen it's it's basically uh, in a way a bias that happens more often when for instance we have ownership of something when we basically uh, buy a car we think that that car is more valuable than anyone else because it's a it's an emotional attachment that we create uh, with that so in a way our analysis becomes our own child or our own, you know, our own family member in a way, right? So we get a bit over attached to it, especially if it's a trade as well. And uh, then we start to throw in kind of, we get a bias, we become not so neutral anymore, and we kind of lose sight of the fact that the market can do anything it wants. The market will go, we can't control that, and that's probably one of the most difficult things. So how to do it differently? Well, instead of building in an opinion of what we think it should do, what we basically want is what the market wants. All right, that's what, uh, for instance, Bill Williams have said, uh, and other traders, I'm sure, want what the market wants. So how do we, what does that mean? Well, basically, we want, we want to trade what we see, what we actually observe from a neutral perspective, you know, as, as objectively as possible, not what we want to see happening. I had a basically a blog maybe about a week ago I think or so where I was talking about that the fact that trading is like a dance and you know the fact where we dance typically if you're dancing in a, in a pair right with two uh, in, in, in a couple then often the male would be leading and the female will be following so that is basically the same with the markets, right? The markets is leading, and as traders, we want to follow that market. We want to follow where it goes at, at the right times, when it makes sense. So that maybe explains, I don't know, I, I don't have any stats here. This is just me thinking out loud here with you. But maybe that's why that uh, often you hear at least that ladies do, women do a very good job in trading, and men tend to struggle uh, on average, right? So I don't know if that's true, all right? That's just, I don't have any statistics on that, all right? So, but let's just, for the moment, go along with that. 
and think about why. Well, perhaps because uh, in dancing, it is a natural role for, uh, for men to lead in that dance, all right? So following the market might not be uh, easy. It might be very difficult for, for traders that are using trading as, a, as an ego boost, right? Because you shouldn't be following. If, if you want to boost your ego, you want to be leading. Right? There's nothing wrong with, wrong with leading, by the way, because uh, in, in the right way. For instance, if you're leading, um, you know, Bill Williams, for instance, also says that uh, great traders are the ones that are risk takers, right? are adventurers. Right? And, and in that way, that kind of leadership is good. But there's also a different type of leadership, as I said, that is more of an ego boost. And, and then you get into trouble. All right? So... By the way, the webinar is recorded uh, and it is will be uploaded to YouTube. Yes, indeed. All right. So with that said, follow the market. You want to be following basically what the market is showing us and the trading what we see and not what we expect. And how do you do that? Well, I always refer to decision zones and setting up triggers. Now, that's just one way, I guess. There are plenty of other ways uh, out there uh, that are possible to tackle as well, I would say. But my method is saying, okay, and, and then at two, if you look at his analysis, right, we want price basically to, to, to confirm our analysis. So if I'm looking for, uh, for instance, if I use my wave analysis and I'm looking for a wave three, that price needs to break this point and that confirms the wave three. And then I would like to see that trigger a good candle close to make that confirmation uh, in that zone. Or I'm looking for a bounce, and I see that there's a very big space to the next resistance level. That wide open space I'm interested in. I will wait for price to get to a decision zone, get back to a support level, wait for a trigger at that support level before I trade my analysis. So the market confirms. Uh, I, have, I see an opportunity, but I wait for the market to confirm uh, that it's doing what I would like to basically to, to trade. All right? So that's how I do that. So I don't want to get too technical here, this is not the, uh, the goal of this particular webinar. But this is the technical solution, basically, to this trading psychology discussion that we've just had. All right, let's move on to the next one, point two. So often enough, we kind of cycle in, basically, bumping into a problem and trying to find a solution, right? So the problem with that is that we're trying different ways. We're trying very, very hard, we're putting a lot of energy in trying to solve something. And we might just barely at the end of the day or, you know, after a substantial time, manage to kind of find a solution. But that costs so much energy that we then give up, basically. Well, I don't give up, but we don't put the same kind of effort into it and our performance goes down. So it kind of sucks so much of our energy trying this, trying that, that we kind of run out of steam. And even if we find a solution, if then we're still really not consistent in applying it. So basically you see often these ups and downs or these pendulum movements where you don't really get, you don't break out of that cycle. All right, that's, that's very often a problem. And to do that, to get out of that cycle, to break free out of that, uh, basically that box, we have to think differently. We have to, don't see it basically uh, as a problem that needs to be solved. We want to change our method or our approach, change the structure that is, that is below it. Because if we change, change the structure, we're pushing ourselves to a higher level of consciousness. And then the problem might not even exist anymore, right? That thing that maybe blocks us from trading uh, could even go back in the background or disappear in, in, in full. Uh, so, you know, you don't want to get caught in the feedback, kind of in a loop here, and, and keep bumping with your head against the wall, thinking, oh, that problem, I'll never get around it. Maybe if you, if you look over the wall, instead of hitting your head against the wall, you might see that the wall is not a problem at all, right? So looking at it from a, from a bigger perspective or from a, a smaller perspective, you know, those will give you more, uh, in, in occasions, more kind of view, viewing point that you look at things, things differently. So I know this sounds very vague. So let's give some, uh, or perhaps vague, 
So let's take a look at more some some more exact details. All right. So for instance, if you're nervous about trading now, think about why are you trading? You could try to find a solution, right, in, in practical details, right? You could try to uh, make your plan more precise so you feel less nervous. But you can also try to totally throw it around and say, why am I nervous? Why don't I approach trading as something that's fun, that I actually enjoy, right? So that might knock the wind out of that nervousness entirely. Might totally remove it, right? That's, that's a concrete example, for instance, what I've been theoretically talking about for a few minutes before that, all right? Or perhaps you look at your trading plan and, you know, we got a great trading plan blog from Nenet last week, Sunday. This week, I'll be talking about treating trading as business. For instance, you go through those two blogs, uh, articles, and you think, wait, I'm not doing this particular part well enough. I don't have that under control. So maybe if you work on those details, right, you solve and you move forward. And don't forget that no matter how we trade, whatever we choose to trade, we are ultimately trading what we believe. All right, doesn't matter if I'm trading awesome oscillator and you are also trading the awesome oscillator. We're both trading the same indicator, but our experiences, the way we tackle, the way we think about the market, it's all unique. So from that point of view, uh, you know, this can never be exactly replicated, all right? When, when you dive into a system and trade a system, it's a great start, it's very important, but you need to develop more than that. You need to work with the system and you need to take full ownership of it, all right? You can partly outsource, in a way, uh, the, the system and the methods but ultimately, you need to fully take control by knowing it inside and out and at occasions adjusting it to what you think is better for your own trading. You see what I mean? You, you know, ultimately, there are going to be maybe things that you want to do differently that fit your trading style better. Right? Then it could, uh, could, want, could trade this way. I could trade that way. And you try it out, but you see that if you do it that way, it's a bit better for you. Great. Right? That is the learning process. That is how you improve and, and move forward. So you match your training psychology with your system. All right? Very important. All right. So traders that trade see it as a challenge. Right? Now, if you are seeing it as an exam, then you might be on the wrong path here. All right? This is not high school or college anymore. So... This is a different kind of um, test. It is, yes, we do have, in a way, a result, of course, with profit or loss uh, each day, each week, each month. So, yes, we do see that kind of result back. But it's a different type of test, or it's not a test at all. It is, in a way, we are measuring our progress, all right? It is a continuous path. It is not a final one time moment and that's it you get your diploma and you have it for life that's not how trading works so it's a different dynamic so what you you don't want to see it as an exam you don't want to feel like you're being examined all right you want to see it as a challenge if you have that mindset you're gonna you're gonna see more fun that fun will help you solve other things as well other dilemmas or problems you might be encountering and it's just going to uh, make it easier for you to, to learn and grow and easier to trust your own belief system. Because ultimately, uh, for bigger success to arrive, you got to believe in your own trading self. All right? Because everyone is going to be trading their own belief system. So until we get to that moment that we believe our own, uh, you know, it's, it's, we, we might have consistency, all right? But moving up to the highest level, you will need to actually fully embrace how you view the market and how you trade the market. Now, that takes time. I'm not kidding you, all right? That doesn't, that's not going to take one week, right? Because after one week, we barely know a few indicators, right? Then after that, we, we build a system, right? Then we try that system, we change it, uh, and etc. That takes time to build the experience, to understand how the market cycles work, to understand 
how, how the patterns uh, behave, how we interact with those price actions. All right. So before we fully consciously, unconsciously as well, trust the way we trade, experience is needed, and we need to learn from that feedback, and that takes time. It's not three months, unfortunately. All right. And unfortunately, yeah, most traders probably already say goodbye to trading within those three months. Well, that's not enough. So that takes time. But if you see it as a challenge, then eventually from that experience, from that feedback, you're going to be trusting your own belief system uh, more and more. And you're going to be enjoying trading more. You're going to have more fun. And you're going to be thinking differently. You're not going to see, you're not going to be thinking about right or wrong, uh, about exams or tests. Uh, but rather as an enjoyable progress route adventure where you slowly but surely, with ups and downs though, see yourself going forward. All right? That is basically um, you know, the advantage of, of approaching it this way. And the stress and the fear will slowly kind of vanish as, uh, as the morning fog uh, does as well. All right. Now within that, so first of all, we basically talked about changing our vision of the market, right? Following the market and trading what we see, not what we expect. Not focusing on problems, but rather focusing on having fun and understanding that what we trade is our belief system and uh, that we're not in an exam. We, we want to think differently. We, wanna, we don't want to think about you know, right or wrong uh, in these cases. Next thing what I want to talk about is another way of looking at the market, different path or a different vision in a way uh, than uh, you might have now. Why is price moving as it does? Everyone will have their own answer for this or their own guesstimate why it does. And there are a lot of fundamental and technical and behavioral reasons why price moves as it does, right? We have interest rates that drive some of that. We have supply and demand for all kinds of participants, technical reasons, psychology behind the market. So there's all kinds of whys uh, and many more that could explain the price movement. But ultimately, price chooses the path of least resistance. Whatever that is, it is the easiest way for price to flow. Price in the market is very, very similar or the same as a natural object and uh, or that's what I agree with uh, and not so much a mathematical object nature you would see the same thing I give an example right here as you can see in the left lower corner a river flowing from the mountaintop right so or the path that goes down from the top to the bottom the the paths that are created either by humans or uh, in the right by water naturally seek that path of least resistance. So when it chooses, when it starts at the top and it ends up in, in the sea, then that is that path of least resistance. It's going to go around big boulders, but it might push smaller rocks to the side and go right through it. So that flow that we see here, same for price. Price moves in constant flow as well, and uh, basically, it will do the same thing. Now, for price, there are different barriers. Water, we will have basically uh, the strength of the water, which is momentum in trading. And the stone will represent resistance, which is support and resistance in trading. So it is basically this battle between resistance and flow, or in trading between support and resistance and momentum, that decides what is that path of least resistance. If the momentum is strong, support of resistance will break. If momentum is weakening and support of resistance is relatively already stronger or mild, but momentum is weaker, then support of resistance will win. So it's the battle between those two concepts that will basically indicate whether the resistance or the flow will be stronger. If the flow is stronger, we get a break, for instance. If the resistance is stronger, we get a turn or a bounce. Patterns uh, is important for me because that's part of the triangle that I analyze price. And patterns 
in a way you can see as a, is resembled by, for instance, sand, right? So it kind of it's the glue uh, between resistance and flow. It it can be both. It could stop the flow a bit. Uh, it yeah, it could basically act as a, as as a way to push perhaps resistance out of the way. But more or less, it's a glue. So it's kind of like in trading, at least, it, it shows, by looking at patterns, it kind of gives us more information about what will happen, what will be more stronger, right? The resistance or the flow. And by looking at patterns, we get more, uh, more information about the psychology of the market, and therefore, we get more information about this particular battle. So by analyzing the path, the path of least resistance, and by looking at, okay, where in this path, the most likely path, do I see the best trading opportunities? And uh, at what moment do I think could be the best spot to trade that space? And what am I looking for at that decision zone that could make me want to trade it? So now, of course, I'm referring back to the decision zone and the trigger. All right, so when I see a, a space that I find interesting, then I decide what decision zone would I, would, will I wait for and what kind of trigger am I looking for at that decision zone? So what is the path of least resistance? First of all, what kind of space do I want to trade? Is there space in that path? And where, what space do I like the most or which ones? Perhaps there are multiple on different time frames. And then the next question is, I want to trade that space. What decision zone am I going to wait for? and what trigger. All right, so that's how we can translate the path of least resistance to uh, actual kind of trading decisions. So obviously this is, this is part of my belief system, this particular concept, path of least, re least resistance, right? That is not something that everyone must subscribe to or use to become a successful trader, but it is something that I think could this using this concept could help you with tackling any uh, or you know doubt or lack of confidence in your analysis. That's why I'm mentioning it. If not, put it aside. No problem at all. But if you do think it's useful, great. I'm hoping, of course, that a few of you might find this useful and might be beneficial for you, right? But if I'm sure that not everyone would like this particular point, right? Whereas the others, I think are more universal. I do think that all these first three things, seeing trading as dancing, I think is really uh, a good tip for everyone. I don't think that there's an exception here, right? I think that this is basically something that is valid for all of us. Uh, same with this don't solve problems and focus on having fun. I think that this is something that we all can use. But the path of least resistance is part of my, my belief system the way I look at price, the way I want to tackle price. And although I, in my opinion, fully subscribe to the fact that really price does move according to the path of least resistance, it doesn't mean that everyone wants to necessarily use that or finds that beneficial for trading. All right, last but not least, uh, don't worry about the market. What is the market going to do? Don't worry about trying to outsmart it. Don't worry about trying to you know, have a battle against the market. It's not about a battle. It's not about outsmarting it. Uh, the market is your ally. And it offers basically uh, opportunity for us to capitalize on the movements. So as long as, you know, as soon as we stop this kind of artificial war in our head about how we can tackle the markets, you know, thinking less about the markets, but about thinking more rather about how to follow the markets would be more beneficial. So skip all those ideas about what we hope to see. Uh, try not to get distracted or angered, as I write here, and try to you know, focus on your way of, your belief system, your way of trading, and uh, trying to trade with that market, all right? So anytime we have worries about anything like this, try to use any of these tips to put yourself in a position that you move forward and progress uh, beyond that point. Alrighty, we can take a look at the euro dollar. 
got a few minutes left. Any questions on this? These were my uh, five points, basically, that I wanted to share with you that I think could help you with, uh, with the confidence. And ultimately, basically, confidence will rise, should rise, should get better as, as you know, the more confidence, sorry, the more trading experience we have uh, that uh, should go up and should get better and better. All right, let me open the platform. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know. And, you, you know, when I take a look at the live webinars on Tuesday, Wednesday mornings, you will hear me always talk about basically my belief system, how I look at the market, my wave analysis, uh, you know, maybe not very in-depth because I know that not everyone likes wave analysis, but basically behind it is my wave analysis, how I think about the market, how I tackle the market. Uh, you'll see my belief system. But every time I, I say this is, at this point, I'm looking for a decision zone, I'm looking for a trigger. Uh, at that point, I think it's invalidated. I'm looking for a confirmation here. Uh, you know, if the break is here or the bounce is here. So I'm very much in a don't know state. Uh, I do have certain belief in a way regarding wave analysis, but I don't want the market to confirm, you know, I don't want to basically take a position and want the market to confirm that. No, I, it's the other way around. I always let the market lead. I do have maybe a certain expectations, but it's always based on what I see uh, happening in the market. So let's take a look at uh, the euro dollar here. Uh, let's see. So yeah, very strong upside. Yesterday uh, we talked about yesterday morning we talked about it here. I said, well, price could still continue because this momentum is not over. But at five to six candles, uh, if we get a break above 111.60, which it just didn't, it was really really close. Or if we get five to six candles not breaking this low, we're going to get a bigger upside. So that happened here. Of course, the FOMC pushed it further today. We didn't get much of a dip, though. That's what I was expecting. Uh, rather, we got a break of the top immediately and, and a further upside. So pretty strong upside. And uh, I think that that was a substantial push. I still think that from this perspective, the momentum is, is rather strong. And I would not be surprised to see one more bounce up to higher fibs. Like we got to stop here. Let me draw a a different fib here from bottom to top all right price stopping at the 61.8 fib here as you can see so I would not be surprised to see a three wave down here and then a bounce back to the 78.6 fib considering this momentum that's what I would expect at the moment maybe a hook back here failure here one more push down even we could put a fib from here to here like this so I'm looking for confirmation at the 61.8 fib, for instance. If I see a bounce there, I think that that could be a bouncing spot or the 78.6 fib, right? Potential pattern error, inverted head and shoulders for a bounce up to 112.75. There, I would expect, again, a decision zone. I would expect a bearish bounce for a down move. So I think the most interesting from my perspective is bounce here or bounce higher. Up, uh, you know, here up, of course, to the upside and here to the downside. So let's see if there are any questions. Uh, let's see, some comments here. Yeah, many times we get into a pendulum where we try something and it doesn't work out, so we do the opposite of the previous trade. We use a small stop loss, doesn't work out, so we use a big stop loss. That doesn't work out, we use a small one again. That doesn't work out, so we get trapped, right, in this, in this cycle, trying to fixed the previous thing that we bumped into. Uh, I'm not sure if, if rags is that what, if that is what rags meant, but uh, that's in any case you see that very often indeed. Um, maybe rags means something different. Rags is talking about don't chasing the the last, don't chasing big losses. Yes, that's also indeed very tempting to kind of revenge trade, and absolutely that's one of the things that we want to. That's a problem. And we want to get past that by yeah, basically trying to find a, find a way that trading is still exciting for you without necessarily having to take basically that big risk, for instance. All right, so 
hoping to a trade, clinging on to a trade indeed, rather than cutting it short, cutting the last short, very, very often indeed too. Just very easy to hope for the trade. It's difficult to accept losses. We feel losses two to two and a half times as more than a win. So that means that it's so difficult for us to accept losses in general, even though they're small. I think that's why cutting losses is so difficult, letting winners run so difficult because from a psychological point, it's very painful to take a loss, even if it's small. Whereas, uh, basically, a win feels very good. So we prefer to cut wins short because then we have a win and yeah, hang on to those losses. And we need the reverse. One thing I like to do is use trade management style that looks at time factors. So five to six candles, not breaking the low. So, for instance, here I was looking for rejection at fibs, right? So short anywhere around 111.75, for instance. And I'm in this trade to the downside, okay? So, of course, I could get tempted. Let's say someone gets tempted thinking about exiting here. Okay, 30, 40 pips in the pocket. I would like to exit, right? So instead of basically trying to find a precise price, perhaps, uh, using time helps or fractals in a way is my method that I kind of calm myself down because look at all these candles. They're still pushing. They're still pushing every time a lower low. So that basically gives me a bit of relief that I'm thinking that, okay, the market is still going my way, right? So that, that helps me. And if I see five to six candles that are not pushing my way and I get uh, basically look at the bigger market structure and I don't think that after that there will be more push, then five to six candles this is a great way then to exit somewhere around here. I'm exiting not always, but decent amount of cases, you get a pretty good exit there and uh, you get a good trade management trail stop in a way with the market exit in that zone. So you more or less get the most out of it without trying to outsmart the market where it exactly is going to turn. But this is again a separate topic about trade management and we've had webinars on that before so you can find that as well on the uh, Admiral Markets YouTube channel. So. That was my part. Thanks so much, folks. If you have any questions, of course, please feel free still to uh, to use that chat. In the meantime, though, I'm going to pass it over to Nenet. Let's see his tips for increasing that confidence. All right, there we go. Thanks, Chris. So, yeah, excellent, excellent, as always. And uh, I would like to say that uh, we've all been there. So I've been there and know what I'm what we are talking about and I know what you can do actually to restore the confidence in your trading because uh, well when we started our trading career we actually well as a professional traders of course as professional traders we didn't always have uh, good wins and we didn't always have uh, winning months so the thing is that we already uh, went through all the, uh, these different paths and I think that the path uh, of uh, taking the least resistance is not good so you need to definitely go with, with different uh, things so I will talk a little bit about um, things that you should definitely practice and that you, you should definitely try to incorporate into your trading day uh, because I'm sure I'm 100% I'm sure that uh, you can you can make it in forex market but just you need to believe in yourself your system and your own money management without the proper money management I, I will repeat this hundred times there is no success so first of all how to restore a confidence well definitely you you can restore your confidence by reviewing your trading plan so uh, if you think that you cannot do that well you need to give uh, yourself like well, a couple of days to read through your trading plan. If you don't have a trading plan, then go and make it, okay? And uh, if you still don't know what to do, well, maybe the problem is that you don't read markets as well. So you need to, to, to think, do you, do you always take the account uh, only technical analysis, only the system, or maybe there, is some, there are some fundamental facts that you should take it. For example, yesterday, we had a Fed meeting, right? Uh, 
and a lot of people were asking me, Nenad, what do you think will fed the uh, high rate? Because uh, some banks and a lot of analysts for that work for other brokers and that work for uh, banks actually said that there was a possibility of rate hike. So what can we do? You say that there will no, that there won't be a rate hike. Others say that there will be a rate hike. And now we are get to the point. Now, what Chris said is actually the truth. I see the market as as uh, in one way. Uh, you maybe see the market in in other way. So we cannot say who is wrong, who is right. We just have our own opinions. And maybe maybe the some people will not agree with us. But uh, the, the problem is that uh, we are there to help you who follow us, right? So if you think that we are right, you will definitely listen to our advice. So uh, what I said is actually there were four possible scenarios. And I gave you DAX analysis. Because I thought that if I give you Euro dollar analysis, you might be tempted to actually uh, trade something that you already no, but I wanted to put you into the fire, right? So that is the remedy. You know, fire in nature is remedy. All the Indians, for example, uh, they were healed by fire, by standing in the fire, by putting a small uh, pieces of fire on their skin to actually burn if something is contagious, right? And yesterday I said, okay, I will do DEX analysis instead of Euro dollar. And let's see how many people will try to read it and try to comprehend what I what I meant by it. So I actually did fundamental analysis that was mixed with technical analysis. Okay. So now I will show you, and you will see. I'm sure that you already saw it, but let's see. That was something different. So I wanted also to see uh, whether traders will listen and heed these advices. So, why I'm saying this, if you are strictly technical trader, sometimes you need to pay attention to fundamental facts. And yesterday was a time that if you wanted to trade after FOMC, you should have paid attention to fundamental things. And this is what happened. Between 3 and 4, no rate change, hint of rate hike in upcoming months. So this was basically full fun fundamental analysis that was mixed with technicals. Now, if you actually, I don't know how many of you traded yesterday. Now let's say that you were losing the last couple of days and you didn't have any confidence. Yesterday maybe if you hear this advice and you actually try to trade it, well maybe then you could have made some money. So the point is you need to think of the whole wood, not just the tree. So if you, if you mix sometimes, sometimes, you don't need to mix it always, but sometimes if you wait and, and mix fundamental facts with uh, technical analysis, then you will get results. So what happened is actually no rate change, no rate hikes imminent or something in between here and I said with possible extension. So market hit all these levels for DAX and it's trying to get to 10, 7, 80. So that is because fundamental analysis gave us the right to choose these technical levels. Okay, so sometimes that can be very, very beneficial to you. So what it means also, maybe you should wait for the news and then try to trade the news, only news. Or you can actually try to trade London Open. If you see that you're losing in your intraday setups, then try to focus on early morning trade. I will show you later during the webinar, exactly near the end of the webinar, I will show you a Skype snapshot where my good friend, who is also a trader, but he is a full-time equity trader. Uh, we cannot say we are actually, Chris and I are professional traders, and he is full-time trader, and it means that he only trades, and he does nothing in, in his life except for trading, right? Nothing else, Dif literally nothing. Uh, actually, he also experienced some losses, but 
The point is, now he is winning constantly, and I will show you what he wrote on Skype. And that is the fact, and that is the truth, guys. Now I'm not speaking from my own perspective as a professional trader and analyst, but I'm speaking from a perspective of a full-time trader. So he also loses money, and you need to know, guys. So if you start to lose, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of anything. It is just a, a small slap to your face to actually get in, get back to trading fresh and ready for new beginnings. Well, believe me, it's not the end of the world. The, the second best possible thing you can do for yourself is lower your risk, always and always. Instead of taking 2, 3, 10 percent per risk, just drop it down. Drop to 0.5, 1 percent of risk. Also, you need to have a plan B. And definitely, practice a demo account once you lose a complete confidence. Try to practice a demo as you were trading live account. That will help you. What is a plan B, for example? Think about your stop losses. Do you trade with a stop loss? Well, maybe you trade, maybe you don't trade, right? But the thing is, if you have like $100,000 on your account, you can trade without a stop loss. Just open a mini lot and right, you will be safe. If you have a million dollars on your account, then you can open one lot without a stop loss, right? But the chance is that you don't have that sum of money, right? So you need to use stop loss. So you need to use stop loss. I'm telling you again. Forget about strict rules for stop loss placement. There is no strict rules for stop loss placement. There is only fixed risk. Fixed risk only. Stop will always change. Because euro dollar today, maybe last 14 days, it has ATR of 150. And let's say that next five days it will have ATR of 60. So what are we talking about? Really fixed loss of 30 pips. No, forex trading is not fixed stop loss. Forex trading is fixed risk, not fixed stop loss. So if you try to fix your risk, like, as I said, 1%, then you can definitely see a success. Maybe you won't be happy if you have low account, small account, with profits. That's normal, guys. Think about it always. What I say, that's the same as if you were putting a deposit in your bank. Well, if you put 200 euros, after a year, you will have probably 202 euros, right? So bank will give you only, only a small percentage of return to investment, ROI. So return of investment will be very low. So think again, if you trade with 1% of risk and you can make 2, 3, 5% constantly per month, you will be okay. I know it's tempted because sometimes you will see that there are systems that promise a thousand percentage on their account. I personally have never ever made thousand percent on any any account during my career. My big account is like 45, 50 percent up. Acu pivot point account is is something like now I need to see it. It's like uh, maybe 160, 70, because we started, you know that we started very low, 350 euros. So now it's like 3,000 and something. I, I didn't trade very actively last couple of weeks, but it's still in, in the upside, so why touch it? We go slow, step by step. Other accounts that I have traded throughout my career, well, same thing. I was always keeping a low profile and a low risk. 
as soon as I start to trade with big risk, everything is burned. Always. It always happens. As soon as I start to actually go with 5-10% of risk, everything goes you know, to hell, right? So, the problem is, new traders and veteran traders sometimes experience the same thing, and that is not understanding leverage correctly and not understanding what leverage means in Forex market. It's not easy to trade without a leverage because if you have less than 100,000 on your account, you cannot trade. You need a broker, right? The point is, try to use dead stops. What it means? Instead of risking, instead of placing always dynamic stop loss, because maybe you don't know where to place stop loss, try to go with that stop. It means use, let's say, fixed stop loss of 60 pips for intraday trades. And then just put a fixed risk into that dead stop. So let's say that you want to make a trade, and let's say that your system is 70% successful. 70%, right? And let's say that you will try to get like 20, 30, 40 pips out of your trades. With that stop, you can make it. So lower your risk. Let's say you risk 1% per trade. Put a dead stop of, I'm just giving you an example, like 60, 70 pips, and you need to calculate that 1% of risk into that 60, 70 pips, and always keep the same stop loss. That is the thing what you should do if you still are not confident in your trading. You need to understand the leverage. What is leverage, guys? What is leverage? Now, let's see this table. I always recommend no more than 5 to 1 leverage. For example, if your account balance is $5,000, don't trade with more than 2500 per position. That means 0 0.25, because mean a lot is $10,000. 24 is 0 0.25. Let's say prop risk is 0.5 to 1% per trade. It doesn't matter if your stop loss is 30 or 100 because this is your risk. So put a dead stop. If you don't want to use a dead stop, then as I said, stop loss is dynamic. You need to know what a stop loss is for each pair because sometimes the pair will move much higher than previous week. Sometimes this pair will be in range, so you don't need to use that big stop loss. It's your own decision. But the risk should be fixed. And this is the formula. Stop loss times the leverage is divided by 100%. So if your stop loss is 20 pips and your leverage is 5, as we said, like in this example, then it equals to 1% of risk of that stop loss. So 20 times 5 divided by 100 is 1%. So with five, one to five leverage with a stop loss of 20 pips, actually you can risk with 1%. So this is the formula for risk. And that is the truth in Forex market. It's all about risk. Systems are there to help in our trading decisions. But there is no rule that you should trade a system like a robot. Instead of making five trades per day, try to make only two trades per day. And you will see that your success ratio will go higher. Okay? This is formula that you should stick to it. Risk formula for you for retail trader, not for professional. Traders are actually traders who trade with investment funds. That is different. But for you as a retail trader, this is the formula. Okay? Don't ever go above 5% of risk. And I can say stick to 1% of risk. 
human factor. A lot of people asking, uh, were asking me, Leonard, Chris and you say that you made 150% on your account. I traded and I couldn't make 150%. Why is that so? The simple explanation is the human factor. As Chris already explained, we are all different. I, I can trade EQ, you can trade EQ, but maybe we don't see same things. Maybe you are buying into resistance or selling into support. As Chris said, he likes his awesome escalator, but what he sees with his awesome escalator can be different what you see because there are literally hundred systems out there that use awesome escalator and even that is not enough because you need to take other things in confluence when you trade. Is this a good day to trade? Is this support or resistance? What is this pair? Does, it, does this pair have a good trend? Are our emotions over, over uh, are we in, in a state of euphoria? Are they over-exaggerated? Everything should be taken into account. Can we allow ourselves a bigger risk? Can we allow to lose 300 euros in favor of 1,000 euros? I can allow it, maybe you can, maybe you can allow more. So everyone is different, guys. Human factor is the only factor that determines the success versus loss. One system can be traded by 10 different people and 1,000, right? And everyone will have different results. Some people will lose, some people will win. That is human factor. And that is, if everything is the same, if everything is so simple, everyone would be millionaires. If we all traded systems, whatever system is the best, we would all be millionaires. So we need to know when to trade. I always say, uh, Forex timing, first three hours of each session. Uh, uh, which time frames do we trade? Do we trade Asian markets? Do we trade the uh, London market? Guys, if you don't know that equities will move during Asian session, then you should never trade Asian session. Asian session is moved by Nikkei index and equities, China stock markets, a lot, guys. And if you trade yen pairs, then you should stick to it. But you cannot trade EuroCAD during during uh, New York, uh, during the Tokyo session, even if your system is giving you signals for EuroCAD. There is only 1%, 2% of human factor decisions. Also, you started to win, right? And where are your emotions? You are euphoric, right? What did I say thousand times? I had a seminar in Germany, in Frankfurt, and I talked about this for like 45 minutes. You don't trade where your emotions are over-exaggerated. You don't trade where you are euphoric, guys. Because if you, if you experience a streak of wins with your system, you will be extreme euphoric. And you can make one mistake. And you know what I'm talking about. You know what mistake is. That mistake is over leveraging because you are euphoric. You will instead of one percent of risk, you will make ten percent of risk. I know that that is the fact. So always start here, optimistic, hopeful, because still you have the time to be euphoric. Think about this graph as a price action. If you start here, when you end here, stop trading. It will usually take two successful trades to get you to being happy and euphoric. Two or three trades. Usually it's two trades. And if you drop below content spiral, well, you can be in, sucked in into a negative spiral. And that is 
the worst thing that can happen. So stop after profit. And I know money doesn't stink is the truth. So we are all attracted to money. But think how you can control your emotions. Think about it. Do not let a negative spiral get into you. Because then the way from this support towards this resistance is very hard. Much, much harder than getting from optimistic to here. Think about this as a form of price action. Watch this, guys. This is so-called death spiral. This can happen to everyone. So the death spiral will occur because many traders will take losses, but they still believe they should leverage up more and risk more per trade in order to get the money back. And what is the worst thing? They simply not believe that they will get the money back. They, they believe that they will get money back now and today. And usually those traders go with a highly leveraged position at the worst possible market times. Think about, and you who listen to this on YouTube, think, think about how many times did it happen to you. You lost for the day and you make immediate trade when there is no market movement and you are done. So you start with 1% per trade, right? You had series of losses and now you are down 10%. What will happen? Someone might say, okay, I will risk 10% now and make one to one risk to just get it back. But what can happen is they will not make one to one risk to reward because maybe next trade, because of different factors, market timing, whatever, is not good. So the trader has just gone from risking 1% to 10% per trade in order to recover for a trading loss. With just a single trade, that happens to you, I know that. And what will happen again? Well, usually it's a loss. So it's not in just 10%, now it's 20% of loss. And usually that that spiral will continue. Trader will say next trade we are going to risk 20% for one to one risk to reward, but well, if it goes to 40%, it's very hard to recover. Very, very hard to recover. And now what is the, the truth about this? That trading system was not designed for high leverage. That trading system is not maybe designed for high win rates. But the trader psychology converted that system into something that that system isn't because he or she wanted to get money back. Completely wrong. Change yourself. Change yourself. This is not good. And finally, this is what my friend told me. This is from Skype. I did a snapshot. As I said, my friend also went into a spiral of doom. And he also went in a negative spiral despite being full-time trader. And wa watch this. Day 7, straight profit. It's good, no losses. And what he said afterward, too many mistakes in the past with over-trading. Best protect profits. This is what I'm... What, what I've been saying to you so many times, both Chris and I, too many mistakes in the past with overtrading, protect your profits. So, let's sum it all up. Risk less, okay, risk less, this is very important. Review your trading plan, get into plan B, and if you are not confident that you are doing a live account, Try to trade demo account as if you were trading live account. If you don't know how to use dynamic stops, forget about 30 pips stop loss for each single pair each day. So try to use dynamic stops. Watch for ATR movement, watch for previous highs and lows, and practice with dynamic stops. Go with a trend, don't go counter trend. Don't pick top, tops and bottoms. 
go with a dead stop if you can do it with a stop loss. With a fixed risk, that is very important. And understand the leverage, as I said. This should definitely help you guys. If you have any questions, you can ask us now. I hope that you enjoyed this little truth presentation and very truthful presentation. So I hope that you made some profits and money this week. And uh, Ilya is saying webinar is recorded. Ilya, I also read your email that you sent me yesterday. I will reply to it. So no problems. Thanks for your comments. Yes, I sound a little bit different than I sounded like two, three years ago through that. But well, I also manage to do some breathing exercises and it helps a lot. Yes. Uh, this webinar is recorded. Also, MACD webinar was recorded yesterday. Bernard is saying very helpful. Thank you very much. So yes, yes, Bernard. Uh, also, uh, thank you. This will be recorded. This is recorded and will be uploaded. So I know that uh, traders who cannot attend and new people who watch us on YouTube uh, will find this very very useful because this is the truth about forex market and forex trading. Think about that human factor, about risks, about stops, all these things that make up our trading plan and our systems, of course. Nat is also saying, nice. Uh, Dave, you are new. Uh, I will show you where you can uh, actually uh, see our webinars. There is a lot of uh, big collection over the internet, so let me open uh, uh, the channel for you. So. Actually, here on Admiral Market, you can actually see a lot of useful things. Okay, here. Uh, Admiral Market channel on YouTube. Here you have playlist channels, whatever. Go to our playlists. You will see a lot of playlists. You have uh, different playlists, even with price action training school. So you will find our webinars there. So guys, thank you for listening. Uh, emotions are my biggest challenge. Bernard is saying, yes, Bernard, you're not the only one. Uh, most traders uh, uh, think that and know that their emotions are the biggest challenge, but they don't have the will to change it. Uh, Admiral is not dealing desk. AISA Admiral market is fully regulated ECN broker. So you can also trade with ECN account. And you can also trade equities, markets, and so on. Ron said uh, also today, uh, it's, uh, let me see the comment. Ron, you are very good at combining Forex with stocks. How do you get an idea for combining DAX with rate hike? Because DAX has had a huge impact. I mean, rate hike or rate uh, cut will always have a huge impact on DAX. And the reason why I'm saying that I stated uh, there, it has to do with U.S. bond yields. They move equities markets, and DAX is one of the, the biggest moving equities. So you always need to combine um, equities when there is a major news. Always remember that. All BOJ important announcements, all the Fed, all ECB, they all move equities. And that will move forex market too, especially yen pairs, because yen carry trades are affected by equities movement. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, anything, you can always ask us, send us an email. If you have a question also, we are there to help you. Cheers, guys. Bye for now.